Hey, welcome back. Good to see you all again. Thanks for joining the channel. Hope you're all well. It's back. So, it is back. It returned. It has a problem. So, typically I don't make videos on my warranty work because if I do a receiver or an amplifier or some piece of equipment and it comes back to me because it has a dirty switch or a noisy pot or maybe a bulb burned out after I, you know, delivered it back. It, it really, there's no content there to make a video out of. So I just usually just fix it and give it back to the customer and, and that's the end of the story, right? But this one has a little unique problem and it's a problem that I missed when I first did the restoration on it. I uh, guess it is my fault because I didn't test it out fully enough. Um, but I'll tell you what was going on here. The, the owner is really happy with the, with the receiver. The only problem he had was when he was list, listening to phonograph um, and he had, he said it happened on both 401 and 402, which kind of clued me in on something. But he says when he was listening to the phono, one channel would go very loud and it would, uh, you know, it make you, uh, but it was random. It was, it wouldn't happen all the time. It would happen sporadically, uh, at random, make this very loud noise. Well, the very, the amplifier would go very loud. And I figured... If the gain on the amplifier sporadically goes high, uh, maybe I had a bad connection or a broken solder joint or a bro open trace in the feedback loop. That's my thinking. Because when you lose your negative feedback, your gain on your amplifier goes to maximum and uh, it stays there. And uh, all right, so he brought me back the um, receiver. This is uh, the first time. This is the second time, actually. So the first time he brought me back the receiver, I opened it up. I took a look at the phono amplifier. I poked around with a stick, and I hit one of the styrene capacitors. And I'll show you which ones they were. So there's these little styrene capacitors in the uh, feedback loop. And I opened it up, and I was tapping with uh, my stick, and when I hit one of these, the amplifier went loud. And then, you know, playing around with it, it would go down and quiet again. So I said, fair enough, found the problem. So I replaced one of the capacitors. And the reason I... The reason I uh, replaced it is because the leg is loose, actually loose on it. You can pull it in and out of the body of the capacitor. This one here. You can pull it in and out. And, you know, I figured, okay... Uh, fair enough. It's got a dicky connection inside the cap. So uh, I replaced the bad cap and I replaced the cap in the other channel for good measure. Put it all back together. Tested it. It worked fine. Okay. Called him. Come get your receiver. It's ready. He came got it. Uh, a couple days later he emailed me and says it's still doing the same thing. And I'm like what the hell is going on here? So I had him bring it back and uh we're going to go through and we're going to check what I missed because obviously I missed something. And we're going to see what is going on with that phono amplifier. And it's uh, starting to, and, uh, not funny anymore, it's starting to get serious. So we're going to go through this one more time. We're, it's going to be the last time I'm going to go through it because we're going to fix it one way or another. And uh, you know me, I don't give up easy. So we're going to go through and check this out. And uh, yeah, that was interesting. So let's get it on the bench, get it uh, unwrapped, and then we'll hook it up and we'll do some testing. Okay, here's a look at the phono stage for the STA2100D. So it has it has inputs for two phonos, uh, phono 1, phono 2. This is phono 1, phono 2, and then you switch between them. Uh, pretty standard affair. There's a DC blocking capacitor. Uh, bias for your input transistor and there's a long tail pair here right at the beginning and then we have a uh, voltage amplification stage and then we have an output buffer now here's the important part is we have our feedback between this transistor and this transistor here's all our feedback our RIAA equalization try and say that fast five times so um, this 1800 picofarad capacitor here 
I changed these two on both channels, one in each channel, and uh, I assumed the problem went away. When I did test it, it didn't come back. But uh, we're going to have a good look at the 6800 uh, picofarad right here. This is a 6.8 nanofarad. Uh, I don't think it would be a problem with any of the resistors. These resistors especially. This one maybe. If this one goes open, I can see the amplifier going into full gain. But uh, and this is the only thing that makes sense to me is these two capacitors. And uh, these are styrene capacitors. They're typically they, they're not they're not supposed to fail. They're they're usually typically pretty robust and uh, trouble free. So we'll see what's going on here. We'll have to get in and have a good look. Okay, so here's a look at the phono board, and uh, if you can see, there's two big pink capacitors here. These are styrene capacitors. These are uh, uh, what is this? This is C three o seven B three o seven A. That is the part of the capacitor that's in the feedback loop. Now you'll see these tiny little styrene ones here. These are thousand picofarads. Um, this is the ones I used to replace the uh, original 1800 picofarad. So here's the original pink capacitor. If you can read that, it says 1800 on there. And it's got a J designation for um, ac um, tolerance, so that's a 5% capacitor. So what I did is I removed those two 1800s. Actually, I found uh, this channel, I found this one was bad. So I removed it and I replaced it with a thousand and I tacked an 800 underneath on the bottom of the board here. You can't see it to make up 1800 picofarads. And uh, I figured, okay, well, that's good enough. That's going to eliminate that defective capacitor. So I uh, also did the other channel just to keep everything balanced and um, gave it a test. Everything worked fine. Uh, didn't get any noise. It didn't get any um, failure of the of the amplifier itself. Everything was working and worked normally. So I buttoned it up and gave it back to the customer. So that's my first mistake is I didn't test this long enough to uh, confirm anything else. Um, so now we have it open. Let's uh, hook it up to, um, let's see here, get a signal going into it and we'll get the speakers hooked up and then we'll give it a test. Okay, so we're all wired into a signal generator and some speakers. I'm going to turn it on now and we're going to wait for it to kick in. Okay. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap around here and see if any of these parts these transistors oh it got louder Okay, got a bad connection here on this capacitor. What about this side? So yeah, that's our problem right here. Is these capacitors, these pink capacitors, are failing on me. So I pulled one out last time, and now we got another one. So usually when you have one capacitor fail, it's it's a one-off, right? But when you have m multiple ones of the same brand or same type, then it's a problematic capacitor. Now I can't recreate that. Oh, there it is. I wonder if that's a cracked solder joint. I, I doubt it. I'd have to pull it out and inspect it. But I'm going to inspect this cap here for cracked solder. Or a broken trace. These ones are working fine. And this channel's steady. Okay. Let's continue going around here. 
I noticed also there's some transistors here. These are 2SC750, or sorry, not 2SC, 2SA750s. And they're on my problem child list. What I might do is just pop replacements in for those two because they're known to go noisy, I think. So let's continue poking around here. Some of these resistors. Sometimes a resistor will fail and go open. But I'm pretty confident I found the problem here. This, these, these uh, capacitors are in the feedback loop. And, yeah. And uh, when they go open, the amplifier goes full gain. That's why we're getting a loud tone out of the ch one channel when it fails. Because we're not getting negative feedback anymore, we're just getting full gain. Okay, so I'm going to keep poking around here. These green caps seem solid and they don't... Just giving it a everything in whack-a-mole but that is yeah that's problematic these capa capacitors this one is a uh, 6800 picofarads so 6.8 nanofarads okay well, I'm glad I found the problem so this is going to get replaced. I'm also going to replace these two transistors. Let me heat some of these up and see what they do. All right, so I got the uh, the tone on the input shut off. Everything disconnected from the input. Got the amplifier cranked up. You can hear the gain, uh, the noise, the background noise. You hear a hum, and you should be able to hear a hiss. We're interested in listening to the hiss, not the hum. So I'm just going to go through with my iron and heat up some of these transistors and we'll see if the background hiss changes. We're going to see if we can notice any difference here, if we have any unstable transistors. So here we go. I'm going to try one side, then the other channel. I do hear a, a, a very low level rumbling going on in the right channel. That one's very sensitive. Okay, so I didn't hear any changes, so I'm going to assume those transistors are all stable. But I do hear some rumbling on the right channel, a low level rumble. That could be a noisy transistor. Trying to cool these off. They didn't get very hot. Okay. I'm gonna let this run for a while and I'm just gonna listen to it and see if I hear anything come up. Okay, here are the two pink styrene capacitors I took out last time. It uh, is 1800 
J tolerance, which means it's 5%. Working voltage 50. And it's got that, uh, that's the manufacturer's symbol there. It's kind of an S inside of a circle. Now the reason I replaced these two capacitors is because this one has a failure on the connection inside. And if I take a pair of pliers, I notice this right off the bat. If you take this lead, can pull in and out. See that's loose. And uh, that's why I yanked both of these out and uh, replaced them. But obviously, the other two capacitors are bad as well, so I'm beginning to suspect all of these pink capacitors that are in the, the unit. And do I go through and change them all? There's a few in the tuner. Um, not all of them are the pink ones. Some of them have silver. So I can see two, three, three capacitors in the tuner. Uh, I don't see any other ones anywhere else at the moment, but I'm not looking too hard either. I'll go through and replace the remaining two in the phono amplifier. And we'll have to test that after. And then I'll have a good look at the ones in the tuner. Alright, so this board's got to come out again for a third time. Uh, it's not terribly difficult after you've done it a couple of times. You have 11 wires to desolder. And these are mostly uh, wires that go to the phono inputs. And the phono gain switch, which is back here. So there's a few of those. And then there's all these multi-pin connectors. They have to be pulled off. Uh, take pictures of where they go because you don't want to mix them up. It's kind of almost, well it is easy to mix them up if you're not careful. But they just pull off and then move them out of the way. Once you have all your wires disconnected, you pull off these connectors here because they're in your way as well on the preamp board. And uh, remove these screws from the front. There's four screws here. And then you have to get a 12 millimeter wrench in here to loosen off that nut and uh, once you get that nut loosened off the whole assembly will come out. I'll show you here once I get everything disconnected. Okay so I got everything disconnected. All of these connectors are removed. There's two connectors on the top here removed. Um, the wires are desoldered. The only thing holding this in right now is the nut. And you just get a 12 millimeter wrench and slip it in this little area here and just loosen it off and you have to work it and uh, just keep going. You loosen it off and you can get it with a screwdriver and just spin the nut back. Except it doesn't always work the way you want it to. Let me try and get some more here. The idea is you want to back the knot off quite a bit because uh, there's a tang that sits in a hole and you have to pull the assembly back away from the hole. So let's just keep moving this nut. Let's try this again. There we go. If there's junk on the thread you might have to uh, use the wrench all the way. But I think I got it backed off quite a bit here. Okay. All right, so we just lift these up, push it back a bit, and here we go. Okay, here we come. Put these up out of the way, put them behind the shaft, and it just slides out. All right, it's out. So try not to mess up the, uh, the order of all these connectors because it's kind of important that you go back in the same spot. So just leave them to lay naturally where they are and uh, we'll get back to that in a bit. All right, now that we've got the board out, we can have a good look at it. And you can see these are the two I replaced previous. And if I flip it over, you'll see the other two that I tacked on the ba back side. These are the 800 picofarad, 820. And uh, and I'm looking at the solder joints for this one, and everything looks 100%. There is no deflection or movement whatsoever in those joints, and they look like they're soldered well. Now, 
So that only leaves one conclusion is there's a bad connection inside this capacitor. So they're both going to have to come out um, and we have to find replacements. So let's just do this right now. Let's pull these two caps out. Okay, let's do the other channel. Where are we? Right here. Okay, I'll clean those holes out and then we'll have to find a substitute for these two bad boys. So this is the, the uh, culprit. I wonder if it has a loose lead like the other one did. Let me pull these off. There's no movement on that one. I don't feel any movement in the joint. But that doesn't mean it can't have a bad connection inside. So we'll get these replaced. I have to find some 6.8 nanofarad capacitors. And uh, these have a J tolerance, which means it's 5%. So the uh, 6.8 nanofarad caps. I reinstalled two here. These are film caps. It's not a common value so I found two of them and I matched them up pretty close in uh, in value so they'll be balanced and we replaced those two caps that had failed or one of them failed anyways and we replaced the other one just to do course and I also pulled out both of these two SA750s these ca uh, transistors have uh, a reputation of going noisy. So I'm pulling them out, even though they test fine, they sound fine, everything's fine with them, I'm pulling them out and I'm replacing them with two SA992s. And uh, these are a modern equivalent, more robust. Hopefully they'll last forever. So let's see, these are emitter collector base, so I have to get these uh, turned around the right way here emitter collector base so we'll get this one installed and I'm going by the board yes I know but we need to get these in and then uh, emitter collector base so let's, let's solder this one up Okay, get the other one in and then we can reinstall this board and get on with life. Uh, emitter collector base, let's see here, emitter, collector base, seems to be backwards from the other one. Okay, so emitter, collector base, hope that's right. I don't want to pull this board out one more time just because I put a back, backwards transistor in. Okay. Alright, so I'm cleaning this up. I'm getting my I'll clean this up and get it reinstalled. Okay, so we're back together. Let's power it up and test it out. So it's, I have a, oh, let's turn this on. I have a uh, thousand hertz tone at one millivolt into the phono input. And here we go. Relay click. So, I think we are okay.
I hope this is the end of it. I don't see any reason why it would do that anymore because we have replaced all the capacitors in the feedback loop. Okay, I'm going to shut this down, shut down the audio input, and turn it up. Now, um, let's see here. As you hear when I tap the wires, here I'll show you. Tap the wires, they're microphonic. Cables are microphonic. Especially shielded cables, they like to uh, display microphonics. That one's really noisy. So that's just the cables underneath. I'm just listening for the hiss. The rumble is gone and the hiss is down in in volume. So I'm going to say those two transistors were a success. I'm going to leave them in and we're going to wrap this up and get this unit back to the customer. Well, there it is. It's all done. I have replaced the four capacitors this time. <laughs> well, two last time, the two this time. Two transistors, and I think the, uh, the phono stage is working pretty good in this thing now. Uh, I'm going to give it a little test, and um, then we'll give it back to the owner, hopefully for the last time. So, thanks for watching. Um, thanks for your patience, and... Um, Sorry, Keith, for making you haul this thing back and forth so many times. It was, I'm sure, I know your back's probably angry at me, but sorry. All right, I'll talk to you later, and uh, take care.